Hello, I'm Pastor Lugada. I'm a research fellow at the Sensor Technology Research Center at University of Sussex. I will be presenting the evaluation of a pseudo zero potential flexible readout circuit for resistive sensor matrices. Our motivation here was to create a flexible readout circuit to condition a 2D array of resistive sensors. In general, networks of resistive sensors are utilized for a plethora of, a plethora of variable applications such as motion tracking, shape sensing, and thermography. Normally, <laughs> these sensors in the grid are connected to interface electronics using numerous wires. This is not ideal for most variable applications. There are four several readout circuits for resistive sensor, sensor arrays have been created. Some of these circuits require diodes or transistors to be positioned right next to each sensor element in the grid. This, however, can negatively impede, this can negatively impede the, uh, the conformability of the sensor metrics. A better suited technique is the zero potential approach, which utilizes trans impedance amplifiers. Normally, rigid trans impedance amplifiers is utilized for this approach. But for wearable applications, a flexible circuit is well suited, since these circuits can be positioned on the matrix or right next to it. By positioning the conditioning circuit in close proximity with the sensor grid ensure guarantees that less noise is picked up by the signal. Flexible trans impedance amplifiers have been created, but they normally require large areas or require rigid elements to be positioned on the flexible structure. In the zero potential approach, the non-inverting input of the amplifier is connected to the ground, which creates a virtual ground in the circuit. Here, a microcontroller is used to power a selected column while keeping the other columns grounded. And this ensures that uh, this, this enables the ability to measure individual sensors. In comparison, the pseudo potential approach is a minimalistic approach. It has minimum complexity, smaller footprint, lower transistor count, and does not require an asymmetrical power supply. However, this circuit does not have a virtual ground, as you can see here. Therefore, there is some current that flows through the other resistors in the grid onto ground. The flexible trans impedance amplifier is created using IGSO transistors. IGSO was selected uh, due to its superior electrical performance in comparison to other semiconductor materials and because of its compatibility with temperature sensitive uh, flexible substrates. The IGSO transistors have been simulated in HSPICE and as shown in the graph here, the simulated results match the actual performance. These transistors can be bent to a radius of 3.5 millimeters. For the flexible trans impedance amplifier, three IGSO transistors were utilized. M1 was the driver transistor, M2 provided the uh, load impedance, whereas M3 provided the feedback impedance. This entire circuit was fit in an area of 1.6 millimeters squared. The flexible trans impedance amplifier had a cutoff frequency of 4 kilohertz. This frequency range is more than adequate for most variable applications. It had a trans impedance gain of 92.5 decibels and a power consumption of only 137 microwatts. 
to compare the performance of our flexible transit speed trans amplifier to a conventionally utilized zero potential approach, we simulated and developed a rigid circuit. A LT1169 amplifier was utilized for the rigid trans impedance amplifier. This, this amplifier was chosen due to its extremely high input impedance and the ability to function at extremely low currents. The circuit had a cutoff frequency of 6.8 kHz, a trans impedance gain of 94.6 decibels, and a power consumption of 115 millivolts. To evaluate the per performance when measuring a 2D grid of sensors, the grid was simulated in LT SPICE. Here, the 5 volts here, 5 volts was applied to the column containing sensor S1. For the first simulation, the resistance of S1 was varied while monitoring, while measuring the voltage out. For the next simulation, the, uh, the resistance of S1 was kept constant, but S the resistance of S2 was varied. And for the uh, next experiment, the resistance of S3 was varied while keeping the other resistances constant. As you can see in the figure here, only varying the resistance of S1 had any impact on the output. This shows that there is no crosstalk between sensors. These measurements were further validated using experiments. The experimental readings only varied by 1.9% in compared to, to the simulation. The, thereafter, the same simulation was done on the flexible structure. When the resistance of S1 was varied, the voltage changed by 0.7 volts. Like with the rigid circuit, change in the resistance of S3 had no impact on the measurement. However, changing S2 brought about a change in the voltage and this corresponded to a crosstalk of 40.4%. Therefore, uh, therefore, we wanted to see if the magnitude of resistance had any impact on this crosstalk. So we changed the magnitude of resistance while monitoring the, the crosstalk percentage. As you can see, uh, the minimum crosstalk happens in the range of 330 to 830 kilo ohms. This is because at higher resistance values, uh, there, is, there was very low current flowing into the circuit, which negatively influenced its performance. And at low resistance values, the magnitude of the external resistance was significantly lower than the load impedance of the circuit, which biased the amplifier and affected its performance. Although these flexible trans impedance amplifiers are affected by crosstalk, they have a selectivity factor of around three. They also have a very low power consumption, which can be advantageous for most wearable applications. If better selectivity is required, a differential amplifier with a high input impedance is preferable. But for circuits that do not need a high selectivity, this minimalistic and less complex approach is better suited. Thank you.